Hello, and welcome to this edition of Bayou Time. I'm your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker and former employee at Terrible in General. And I'm going to tell you why that's important in just a minute. I welcome into the program Charlotte Boudreaux, Infection Control Manager. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. There's a reason why I mention former employee, because I will tell you everything about Terrible in General is what taught me how to be a better person, taught me how to be a better social worker for sure, but it also taught me how to take care of people. And so Charlotte, I know you've been there for a while, you've been a nurse for a long time. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so I started at Terrible in General in January of 1999. Uh, I was one of those non-traditional students, went back to college after I had my family uh, and uh, started working at Terrible in General. Um, Previous with Terrebonne General Medical Center. Right, right. Uh, yes. And we can say that because it yes. used to be TGMC. Right. Now it's TGHS. That's right. And we yeah. have Terrebonne General Health System. Right. Uh, we, uh, so I started out um, as a staff nurse right. there, kind of um, moved up to being a charge nurse, okay. clinical coordinator. Um, right. And then I took my present role as uh, infection control manager. Okay, and you've been doing that for about five years now, yes, right? Yes, that is correct. So three years ago, <laughs> three years ago, life was different, yes. right? So tell us a little bit about what, what your uh, daily routine would be like for you or what you as a manager is like in that role before COVID. Yeah, so what we, you know, as infection control, we're actually infection preventionalists. What we really want to do is prevent comment. those infections. Yes. Uh, so what we look at is what can we do um, to mitigate or to prevent those infections uh, before happening. So we put measures into the hospital so that we can, um, you know, promote patient safety and also staff, staff safety. Right. And then COVID came in and it really kind of changed how we could provide care, but internally, over at Terrible and General Health System, it changed what you do and how you do it. Y'all had to write so many more policies, and so it, it just really, you know, if we thought it was trying on our <laughs> end outside, imagine what it must be like for you as the manager of that. I, I, and I think about that, and so as we thought about you coming on, I thought, man, what what a change in life, right? Yeah, it is. It's been a it's been a change. Um, we learned a lot through these last couple of years, uh, and and like you said, a lot of lot has had to change the way we practice, the way uh, what we're doing on a daily basis. We had to learn. Uh, you know, isolation protocols. Um, right. with, with the surge of COVID, you know, added things were added. So uh, we had to do some education with the staff so that we prepared them to be able to take care of the patients and not uh, get themselves sick. Right. And negative pressure rooms. I mean, all of these things that had to be really specifically designed. And I will tell you, Terrible General Health System stepped up and really was able to provide a venue to make sure that people who were sick got help and protecting the health and safety of your employees has been phenomenal. I mean, y'all have done such a wonderful job at doing that, and, and it echoes what administration and you as a manager have done. And I was going to say, yeah, the, uh, our administration has been so supportive through this. Uh, our facilities department has been so innovative, and also our nursing staff. You know, they they kind of see things like, hey, I think if we do it this. Mm -hmm. it, it can help us. So uh, we, you know, we take everybody's ideas and kind of run with it. Uh, as far as getting um, positive pressure rooms, our right. facilities department like converted a whole wing of the hospital, which uh, was very, very helpful when we had a high increase at the beginning of uh, COVID and we were all just learning. Right. And, and now we've learned a lot right and we've learned how to do things a little bit better but now we're faced with this next surge yeah so we are seeing an increase um you know it's just uh, it's interesting to see as we're now in our what fifth surge and right. each time it's just a little bit different um what we're seeing as far as uh symptoms they all kind of basically are starting the same the list has you know, really not changed much. Right. Um, the thing with COVID is that the symptoms are just really just general symptoms that you start with. Right. Uh, general could, kind of flu-like symptoms. And, and we've got the specificity of what those are. And we've talked about those. Yes. But, but you just, you never really know. And so 
and now these particular cases, and, and we're going to spend a little time in the next segment talking about what those numbers are uh, and what we just recently learned, but we've had to change and grow with that, and we can't just say it's this, it's only this, because like you said, it's kind of a myriad of symptoms, Correct. but they're rather general. Right. It, it's the, you know, oh, I just have a runny nose or mm -hmm. I just have a sinus drip. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think at this point we can't take anything um, for granted, you know, because right. we, we want to make sure that we're protecting everybody around us. So. Right. And so we can't make any presumptions. So when people start feeling bad, even though we may think it's, oh, I get this every year at this time, I get this every year, we need to be much more vigilant about that and, and, and start asking those questions. And quite frankly, there's an ease of getting tested. And exactly. we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about that in the next segment, because Terrebonne General Health System has made it very simple for both. They've made it very simple for people to go and get vaccinated or boosted. They've made it very simple for people to go and get tested and just be aware, because quite frankly, uh, the numbers are telling us that this is spreading a great deal. In fact, um, we've get, just gotten some recent information. They're telling me that we're going to be able to share that we have some of the largest cases we've ever had in one day. So I appreciate very, very much what you do. I appreciate where you do it. And, you know, one of those things, and I hate to leave people with a tease, but we were just letting them know about what those numbers are. I'd like to roll through some of the numbers that we got from the state. So the governor has shared that uh, right of, of yeah, on the 12th, on January the 12th, there were 17,592 new cases of Omicron. That is the highest number of individuals with COVID in any one day in the state. And that's important to know. And so the other thing that's very important to know is that uh, the Department of Health is talking about the fact that people who are um, in the hospital and getting COVID for the second time, so a second infection for people that have had it before, they're saying that 60% of those people that are getting it for a second time are unvaccinated. And I think that's an important point because what it says is, is that even if you've had it, it doesn't protect you from not getting it again. So I know, Charlotte, this is your world and what you deal with, but he's also saying that we have right now 2,081 people in the hospital statewide. That's higher than a year ago of 2069. So if people were wondering, oh yeah, well, maybe it's not that much. No, it's higher than it was before. And so we're really looking at the importance of knowing where we are. And so let's talk about some of the measures that y'all do in the hospital system for keeping people safe? Yeah, so one of the things that we did is with the increase in COVID numbers, uh, which we monitor them and we follow them daily, sure. uh, we needed to, you know, the community be aware that we were going to put some vis visitation guidelines into place. Right. Uh, our previous visitation guidelines were based on a 5% or less positivity rate, which means that it's a low um, spreadability right you know where now we're greater than 10 percent so that puts us in a high um a high rate so what we did is we modified those guidelines and that's just to min minimize the amount of people that are coming into the hospital because what we know about this virus is you may be contagious a couple of days before so if we minimize them and not know it, right. uh, you know, before your symptoms even start, you may be contagious. And then when your symptoms start, it's, it, it just, it hits you. Um, so some of those, you know, we put those changes in place so that we can protect our staff and our patients. Right. And so you mentioned it, we're, we're above 10% as Correct. a positivity rate here in the parish. Correct. The, so uh, the current positivity rate, um, I want to believe, I believe as of Tuesday is the most recent that I saw listed mm -hmm. was right over 25%. And so it's not only 10, it's over 25. It's 25, yeah. Wow. And yeah. that's Terrebonne Parish. In Terrebonne Parish. Yes. Wow. And so now have you guys seen an increase of pay in patients? I know the governor mentioned there's 2,081 people in the hospital. Have y'all seen an increase? Yeah, we have. So uh, 
prior, we were having on average one to two patients. We did go some days with none, but uh -huh. most mostly one to two. Uh, right now, we're greater than 20 patients wow. in the hospital. Wow. And that's a huge increase. That is. And so people are saying, oh, yeah, well, it, it spreads faster, but it's not really as severe. Well, don't say that to the 20 people that are in a hospital right hospital. now, right? And so, and their families, and you guys who are taking care of them and dealing with them. And so, what are some of the symptoms that people are seeing now? I know we talked about it earlier, but yeah. So, some of the things that you uh, that we see the mild symptoms are headache, runny nose, uh, you know, cold-like symptoms, congestion, cough. Um, body aches, muscle aches, uh, fever. Not everybody gets fever. Right. Some do, some don't. Some with that. do, right. some don't. Um, so those are all some of the things that, uh, some of the symptoms. The more severe ones that you need to seek immediate attention is if you have any difficulty breathing, if you have any new onset of confusion, you can't stay awake, um, you have a change of color in your skin, bluish, pale, those things you need to seek immediate uh, right. medical attention for. Or either call your doctor immediately or, uh, or go, 911. go to 911. <laughs> right. Chest pains, that's right. another one of the symptoms that you want to get immediate attention for. And, and the importance of people being able to get vaccinated, uh, Terrible General has made this so much easier for people to get uh, vaccinated. Vaccinated. And so let's share that graphic with them about how easy that is. So if you're interested in getting a vaccination, uh, you can uh, go and get that done at Terrebonne General. And so uh, the vaccinations are open from 8 to 4. And so you can schedule it today. It's a very simple number, 873-4686, 873-HOMA. That's Call right. Call that number. It's very, very easy. It's a free COVID-19 vaccination. It's drive through uh, I went and saw it. It's very, very easy to do and go through. It's uh, and so it's easy to be able to do. But if you're concerned that you have COVID, there is also COVID drive through testing. There's our testing center, yes. So uh, the, you can go ahead and there's a drive through. Um, you can call the number to get an appointment. That is probably the easiest, the easiest way to do to it. To do that. Um, go ahead and get, call the number so we can get you set up. Um, unfortunately, we do have uh, a lot of people that are getting tested. Sure. So um, yeah. We're trying to, you know, get this as efficient as possible. And that's 985-858-7777. And kind of the last thing that we want let, to let people know is uh, how to protect yourself from COVID. So there's four quick things that we can run through about what people can do. Yeah, the big thing is get vaccinated if, you know, if you can get vaccinated get vaccinated if you're vaccinated get yourself boosted yep. uh you want to wear a mask in public places um especially when you can't physically distance yourself um uh, and then anytime you're having symptoms or you know you're you're considering a big gathering go ahead you know take a test if you have any symptoms at all that's that's uh one of the things is that if you're having symptoms get tested, uh, get tested. I, I can't thank you enough for sharing with us a little bit about your history, what happens at Terrebonne General Health System, but more importantly, what people can do if they need it. So, Charlotte, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. And that'll do it for this particular segment. Don't go anywhere. A whole lot more Bayou time when we continue. Yeah.